All right, today we're gonna to show you how to put together a door frame. So we're building our own door frame on this rather than buy one. It's less, it's less to just pick up a few boards. It's, we already have the door from the closet removed. So I've cut the sides to be tall enough. Extra, a little bit extra height to be tall enough for our door. Right? Yep. And it's going to go on top of these, so it had to be an uh, inch and a half longer because these are three quarter inch boards than our door opening. So we'll just lay these down on their side. Chris is so kindly pre stained these. Now, if I measured properly, when I cut this, I don't here. have to measure for my opening. I can just put this flush on this side. And grab the nailer. This was much harder when you nail it by hand because your boards are bouncing around. So this should be hopefully a little easier with, with putting it in this way. Sucked it right in. Just put a few more in. Okay, now having a wall I can push against. This is the trick I used to use when I had to nail it by hand because it didn't walk away. But you'd be careful, you didn't mar the wall, so I'd put a, usually put a board. But with this nailer, you shouldn't have that trouble. Now before I nail this side, I'm just gonna open, or check my opening. I was going for a 30 inch. So you're saying the door is 30 inches, do you leave anything extra for the door the to swing? The door is designed for a 30 inch opening. So the door probably isn't exactly 30 inches. Correct. Ah, so are we at 30? So I would, you know, like I said, I'd rather be maybe a smidge, a smidge over. I definitely don't want to be under. You know, so when I held it flush, it was pretty good. I just got to decide. That's not, that's not square. Not yet. So it looks like I'm a smidge short, so I'm gonna just let this overhang. I'm gonna get to this back side here by about a sixteenth. Check that measurement again. Check, check, and recheck. I'm by no means a finished carpenter, but I play one at home. I'm not worried about square this way right now. Okay. She's probably like, what the hell, why? <laughs> I'm not, but I am worried that we're square this way, which I really should have checked here, but I cut this square and held this flush. So because this is square here, I can pretty much go off, off this here. Mm -hmm. In other words, you basically just put a square here because you want to make sure that, that this board this way is square to this here. Do you want me to go get one? Uh, I can always redo it, but I think it'll be okay. <laughs> now you're saying, why didn't I worry about square this way? We don't have any bracing here in the corners, so these here will just be able to flex a bit back and forth that way. You want it that way for the install? Is there like a... No, see when we put it up. Now is when we're going to get a square to put in here and square it up and level up. And you can see how that's kind of, we'll, we'll have to kind of push one side in and pull that out. And that'll be nice. Okay, so I got to switch to the longer nails, get some shim spacers and some squares and levels. And we're back. So he's pulled out his four foot level. I was gonna say four foot Johnson, but that was wrong. <laughs> it says Johnson. You, you can tell everyone that, that's fine. I'm just seeing if these are, are level here. We didn't put these in. These were existing. Well, we, we, cut, the we cut the opening, but the studs in the wall was here. We added the closet to this room. The previous owner used this room as a laundry room. Hence, this bedroom will have laundry hookups. <laughs> they look a smidge off. 
Okay, I'm holding the bottom out slightly, which is fine. Maybe we aren't tight on the sheetrock, so we'll put an old shim up here, I think. And we'll, you kind of almost have to just start somewhere for doing this stuff. This looks like maybe a decent amount of shim. So when you say shim, here's his pile of shims. And some of these were store bought, and some of these are the, some that we've pulled out of other doors that we've removed, and some of these are just pieces of wood that have flicked off when doing other projects. And I went, hmm, that might be a good shim, and I add it to a box. Because we're that cheap. Wow, well, because it's irritating not to have something when you just want to get a project done. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I have that up there before I tack it. I'm just going to check that if I do, can I get it level? really get a shim but that is that is level so do I want to go further and this side's not going to have anything yet because we haven't tacked the top but uh, can we get it level now we know that if I push this bottom in I'm holding this top this way as long as that side is too far that way we can get a level as long as that is too far the base is too far oh. to, to my right. Um, and right now, that's like almost perfectly level there. So this opening's a little tight for things. We don't have a lot of wiggle room. Do you want to measure Probably it? We have enough that I'm going to go with it. Okay. That's there. Let me get so you the gun. The nailer. So we'll set this. Uh, it's mostly flush. I'm going to split a little bit of the difference. For the trim purposes, I don't want flush to, meaning with the walls with the front sheetrock. There, I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, right here. I don't want to be too much back, but I've got. Uh, look at, I gotta look at the top and the bottom though, because the wall could have a little bit of a bow to it. Let's look at that. <laughs> I do have the shim sticking out the back side, but I don't want to have to trim both sides of it off. So I need to stick, not stick out the front, and now we'll just tack some nails in. Oh, okay, so if I put this on a board and this vial says it's level, right? Mm -hmm. Then when I turn this around, that same vial should still say it's level. Does it? Okay. I'm touching the bottom. I'm touching the top. And it says that this vial here says it's level. Okay. I'm touching the bottom. I'm touching the top. It does not say it's level. Interesting. So this level's not right. Oh! Huh! It says good. Yeah! Let's try this one. But you can see now how I have a bit of a bow Hard to top see. to bottom. This side yes. you can see. Now is it possible the levels got the bow? No, um, probably not, but you can just sight down the level. And if you just sight anything and you're looking straight down it, you can be, your eye can pick up pretty much minor bows and something. And it's nice and straight. <clears throat> and it wouldn't be surprised me that wood would bow. It's not a big deal if we still so the middle was out of, was, there's a, there's a gap. I don't know if we can show that. Right where his finger is, there's a gap. So what we'll do, because it's saying it's pretty good that way, let's turn this one around. Let's see what it <laughs> says. I may whack that bottom a little bit. No, oh, I like that. So if I tack the bottom pretty much snug there, then we can, uh, what we have here. That. The top was attached to the crosshead board so it, it was square, but if this board has a twist in it, it may not be square to the wall. And I'm just checking that it looks reasonable and it's it's okay. So now I you can see when I hold this back side tight, this side wants to roll in. So I'll just put a, a little shim. So nope, didn't it. see it. Okay. So I'm going to put a shim in the front here, somewhere, we can go about there, there we go, that's snug there, there, 
we will check our you can see I've come out too far in the front a little bit so let me back that off so the shims have a, a wedge shape to them right so like yeah. one end is thick one end is skinny well the ones we bought did the ones that we've got cut around who knows what they are that came that we cut off a of pieces of wood mm -hmm. that's pretty good there Check my level. I'm trying to do this keeping pressure oh, so my wedge doesn't fall out. And you can see that if anything, I've gone in a little bit. Do I want to pull that? No, I haven't gone in it at all. Anything. So that's about as close as I can get it. So I'll just put a couple of nails down here now why they put their air release there. I like to use that to push against the thing that I can't because... So do you put the nail through the shim? I did on that one so, because that does help hold the shim in place. So I would surmise that if you're not totally certain, maybe you want to not do that so you can move the shim Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I'll put it below the shim. Okay. You know? And now when we put this level on this side, we had seen that big gap, which you can get from the closet. Oh yeah, look at that. Way easier to see out of the closet than in the closet. Yeah. Into so, the closet. So what I'll do is I'll just take a couple shims right in the center here. So you're gonna have them stick out the front or the back? And I'm gonna make them, you can see the different shapes. I'm gonna make them so they, they kind of work against each other. So that way it evens out and becomes the same thickness. And I'm gonna put one in from the front side Backside. Oh, you're gonna have to shit. You're gonna have to might, snap them off on both sides, honey. Yep, that's what shims are for. And then we'll, uh, and then we'll just keep pushing those in until it pushes that board out till it touches. I gotta get my eye in the right place. Am I lined up with each other? <laughs> oh crap! They've come apart. No, I'm dealing with the sheetrock. And I'm not. I'm against the sheetrock and not the um, the board. Oh, the stud. So the stud. So I gotta cut some sheetrock out of the way. Because um. other words, I'm just on the two outer edges, and I need to be against that board to. All right. So what he's talking solid. about? Oh, this one's covered. You might pull it out and see it. Um, so he's talking. About, oh, this is doing the same thing. So and that was that. It might have been me that cut the sheetrock. I'm sorry. So I should have cut it more flush because what he's running into is that. The sheetrock has a lip, and so he's not making contact with the uh, the stud. Hmm. So I'm just gonna take my little sheetrock saw, and you just by running it, you can kind of feel when you're up against. It. I'm doing the same on this side at about the same height. He's got this all cut out. He's got the shims in place on either side again. And what we're looking for is that gap between the level and the frame to go Watch away. It. I am. I'm not gonna lie, it's not really. <laughs> it's gotten a little better. Yeah, actually, I think you got it. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was. Let's see if I can do this little thing. It's very anticlimactic. I thought it was gonna be like, oh. Sometimes it is. <laughs> I could go further. I mean, our the door we're using in here uh, is a bifold door. So we could have a little, little air. Okay, so. So now basically he's gone far enough that the one from the ins other side is poking out this end. Right? Yeah, and this one's poking and out that And that end. one's poking out that end. And now you're adding... Get another piece of shim. I don't want to... I don't want it to um, bow in the center here and push out. You know? And that would jam up the door. Right. So if anything, you know, I don't want to... Especially, a, um, it's not bifold. even a bifold it would because you know how you always have that, that last push and they go flush and then sometimes they pop back out at you again 
I'm gonna love seeing how you snap yeah. those pieces. That's right. very thick now. So there's, you know, there's, you can see light, but it's probably more like a paper thick thickness now. Like the very tip of this goes in. Shim, I can't get between the two. I um, So that means that you know, I don't see it on the camera, but maybe when it's loaded, it will. I'm probably more like a. You'd have to line up perfectly to see it, which is very hard if you just kind of go slowly across. You might. Oh yeah, yeah, right, you're right, right yeah. there. Yeah, so it's so tight. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I don't want to be bowing out. So. All right. So now I've got those three. I'm gonna go right through these shims because I don't want them shifting on me. Oh. Let's put a couple here. <clears throat> this is a good size closet. I'm standing in here with a camera and I'm actually able to video. Now, usually I'd use a utility razor knife, but I haven't grabbed one. But the trick to get rid of the shims is you just take your utility knife and you cut right along the wall and you don't cut through it all. You don't have to cut through it all the way. Now this one's tricky because we have the other one sticking out this side. I'm using a Leatherman. Yep. So we just got to kind of score it and then you should be able to just... Oh! Oh! Snap it off. I feel like it pushed the whole frame out. Yeah, it's... I can tap it in a little bit. Mm. It's because well, normally cool. I wouldn't go out towards the frame, but I, ha I did it because I could only score so you score the opposite side, like I'm going to push it that way. So if I score this side here, yeah, just a few scores with your utility knife, and then you push it away. Oh, because you've given it a relief cut. You've given it a relief spot, and it just snaps. And sometimes you're lucky and can snap them without, but I find that reduces it. And if you have a little chunk, you can clean it off with the utility knife. So. No, I think that's perfect. Yeah. I think it'd go right over that with the trim. Yep. Exactly. Cool. All right. So what's next? So now we start and we do the other side. Oh, maybe we'll speed this part up. I'm going to call this the level dance. He's got his little toe. <laughs> one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Three. Now I could just put, you know, I, with, with a nailer, I might get away with just putting a few nails through the top, but there's nothing holding it, so that means this thing could push this way. And so, because if I put something here, it's going to want to push over. Oh. Or because there's I'm not tight against it, we put a shim on the top side up here. Oh, I see. To before we nail it. So I'm just going to find something that fits in there reasonably. Some of these, like I said, are not shim shims, so they're just set thickness. Let's see if it goes in from this side. No, it's a little too thick. That one is actually a shim. It's a really thick one. It's the end of a long shim. They yeah. come in different sizes. You can buy them in like 12 inch, what is it, 6, 12, 4. I think I saw some 24 or 20 inch ones. There we go. You can also, but this is a remains of a cedar shingle. And a lot of times they'll pick up cedar shingles because they have nice shape to them. And they'll use those as shims. In fact, that was kind of what you always used to use until you started cutting these into these little other things. Again, I'm splitting. If I hold it flush out here, I'll probably have a eighth inch on that side. So I'll probably hold it flush with the sheetrock. With the front of the sheetrock here. Okay. So you gotta gotta hold it flush, split the difference. Yeah. If you're if everything's correct, it should be flush front and back. And we're pretty dang close. We've got maybe a, an eighth of an inch, which the trim will hide. Now you're like, why did it split it? Sometimes it'll split the shim when you go through it. No. Um, why have I not measured? Well, we measured the top to begin with. Right? Yeah. So we Stress should still be up. fine. Because that top was connected to the board. So we have our 30 inches. I see. So we we have that. In theory, if we have this level coming down and we have 30 inches there, this is level across, then this should be all you know 30 inches down. I need to clean up some of the sheetrock that's holding me out. We have a very big spider who has joined us. I think it's alive. He's been there since we started. Oh, really? Yes. I didn't even notice him. Is he alive? And we actually are quite a bit lighter. So the question is why? 
Why do I have, 30, what? I have 30 and a quarter inches? I should only have 30. That was bones. Let me surprise me. That's pretty dang good. That's pretty dang good. They were good? Yeah, that's a smidge right there. You can see. Not much, but that can add up. You know, it's an eighth of an inch here, so by the time I get to the bottom, it could be a 30. You're gonna I know. On that. I know. I should pick that up yeah, instead of walking so over it. Probably just not work backwards. Hmm. So how do we fix that? A shim? See, right. We have to see which which thing we have to get where. I guess this bottom should have been further out. Can I live with it? All right. Looks like Gordon's decided to not live with it. <laughs> You're just trying to push it out and not take it apart. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Add more shim. Oh. So a quarter inch, so what do you do? Like an eighth of an inch? Or do you bring it the full quarter of an inch? I bring it until this was slightly off to the, like, ever so slightly off to the side. So evidently that's enough on this particular level to warrant kicking it over some. And you're right, quite a bit further in the front. That's what I was talking about, how that can actually twist. And we've come in a bit. I've come in half of that. <clears throat> so as we change down below, what's the middle read? Does it matter? Well, the middle you can see now is bowed more. You know, you don't see that. But um, I'll have to decide whether to increase my shimming here or just live with it. Yeah. Now it's pretty much reading right on there. 30, maybe in the 16th or 32nd. Guys. Now I'm just going to get the shims to hold it and then we can nail it. Took quite a few down here he put. One, two, what, three? Yeah, I like a few more, just two more pieces in, I think, so about three to get to pull out. There's a few things, you know, you want it level, but one of the biggest things you want is square. Because you can have your two sides be level, but you cannot be square to the top. And with a bifold door that we're putting in, though, we have a lot more forgiveness there, because there's a bigger gap at the top. People don't tend to, their eye doesn't pick up. You know. Now this one I don't expect will be very good because this board has a bow in it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, but yet it still seems okay there. This one, the board didn't seem to have any bow in it, so hopefully it reads better. And remember before how I was rocking it that little bit? And it doesn't rock at all like that. Oh, a little bit on the top Just now. Just a little bit, and maybe, uh, you know. So, it's a lot less. Okay. A lot less since that's pretty pretty good. So you're pretty satisfied. Yeah. I don't... Now we had on the other side. So you're looking for like what space between? Well, I'm looking for two things. I'm looking to see if we're kind of flush with the uh, sheetrock reasonably, and we got a lot of pieces that patched in here and stuff. Yep. So this wall's not that great. That spider's gonna get all irritated with me. Um, but I'm also looking to see how square to the wall is this board what you can do on the bottom is you know you can have that wedge and it's a wedge shape and it can pull one side in more than the other which we had seen over here and you know so you you want it to be reasonable of course we're near a corner and so this builds sheetrock here so it's thicker joint compound mm -hmm. so this isn't necessarily going to be you know perfect because that wall is not perfectly square. In fact, if we check this, we'll probably find that, you know, it's got some play just from that sheetrock. You know, so the trim 
can help accommodate for a lot of that. But I just want to make sure there's not a major, a major issue happening. That looks, I think it will be all right for what we put in here. So I think I'm going to tack the bottom. Just put a couple more down. No. Normally I like to also put a set in the middle because it helps Ooh, take care of. Gosh, that's got a lot of movement to it. Yeah, because otherwise you, you know. Now the truth is, once you put your your face trim boards on and they tack into here and they tack into the wall, that'll be gone. But uh, I'm not sure how quick it's going to happen and I don't want it to get bowed before that. Yep. So. No. Just yeah. To find a little something that we can. Yeah. So this is how to put in um, a door frame, which I've actually watched a couple times, but I was actually paying more attention this time. <laughs> You've worked with me a few times. You're like, I have. Like, yeah. Done. Well, I'm usually running for tools or something, and you're so fast at it typically that by the time I come in, it's done. Because we've put up what six or seven doors now, and this is probably the most, the slowest we've ever gone. Most of explaining what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm doing this. Go get that. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, the, we did this because we're, we're trying to get this livable before Christmas, 28 days to go. And these boards were floating around after we stained and sanded, sanded and stained them. So now they're safely installed. Out of our way. Out of our <laughs> way. <laughs> and I will get back on getting us ready for Christmas. In fact, even before I put up the baseboards, I could actually now install the blindfold door and get the out of the way. Oh, if you want, yeah. we can do it. I mean, I'm just doing that now. But... I, I have them working from the west yep. to the east. And we ran from the board, so. <laughs> and they were on the west side. I think the door is way on the east side. <laughs> so don't be worried. I'll leave that. There's a track. Why don't you put that? Uh, that's a hole. Oh, when we get further east, we'll do that. Then you might want to paint it ahead. Oh, yes, actually, I should. So we gotta clean this up so we don't leave a mess here. Yep. And then we'll get back and clean up the other room. I will do that. You, or, yeah. <laughs> All right, so help them. hopefully that was helpful in how to install your own frame. That's all for this video. Keep watching. See you next time.